Hello, it's Jimmy here, the Riley. So I have here a Ford Transit Connect again. Okay, so if we look here, we have a spanner and an engine light, and exhaust over limit, filter service now. Got the bonnet open message there. Customer has just pulled the bonnet for me. Okay, so I've just set up the Launch UK Eurotab 3 scan tool. We'll do a high speed scan, see what faults we have here. Now, I did get told by the customer that it had the usual split boost hose and Ford have replaced that but this side of it they weren't willing to do so he's brought it down here to me and we're gonna see if we can get the DPF clean but we have four fault codes here so we might have another issue let's have a look okay then it's finished left low beam headlights is it Particle filter soot restriction, particle filter force power limit, so it's, it's in limp mode. Uh, particle filter pressure sensor, a circuit performance. Alright, so we might need a particle filter pressure sensor. Um, I might have some of those in the van, I'll have to have a look. Now I do remember getting some of those sensors and I do remember some of them didn't really work too well. Uh, they were aftermarket, I'm not sure what ones I've got in the van, I can't remember now. Uh, retrieve. No, we've already seen the codes, I really want to go into live data now. So yeah, we've got these four codes. What I'm going to do is go to data stream. So now we need to see is that pressure sensor working. So these use inlet pressure sensor, so it's just a single tube sensor. And let's get the sud loading up. If it's there. Two hundred and ninety-three percent. And we have let me see if I can change that. HBA ninety one HBA pressure or millibars. So that is high, very, very high. Uh, we'll hold it up at three thousand RPM. seems to keep increasing oh, the revs are increased a little bit there keep it at around 3000 so 550 now let go of that right so that, that took a fair few seconds to come down well now one thing we know is the sensor is working we've got a, a fault there for the circuit of the sensor or the performance of the sensor um, but we can see that when we hold the revs up and then we let go so now the engine's idling and it's still at 300, 200, 150 that to me is probably not the sensor it's probably a blockage in the tube that goes to the sensor so uh, a partial blockage which is uh, not allowing the, the pressure to come back down or it, it's allowing the pressure to come back down but slowly because it's partially blocked so let's get outside back in this weather and see if we can locate and fix the problem okay so if we come in here that is the pipe that's been replaced by Ford now the DPF pressure sensor oh I can see we've got a lot of crystallization around the AdBlue injector there as well that looks like it's gonna need replacing and the DPF pressure sensor is just down there so first thing to do on these is check the exhaust tip for soot. This doesn't have soot, but it does have crystallization, white uh, add blue powder. Let's see if we can get some fluid onto that, break it up. Down there. So that, that's leaking from the add blue injector seal, so it's gonna need a new one of those that we don't have today. Now, unluckily, I have broken my pressure gauge, so I can't show you that there is pressure in the in the pipe but what we're going to do is we're going to clean the pipe out and then we'll retest the live data and we should see a change once i clean it out if we don't then we'll look at changing the sensor itself okay so we've got the sensor on uh sorry this tube attached to the, the uh, hose and i've got the clamp around it just so it stays tight and i've already tried this once so this is how i know that the pipe is blocked because when i try and put the cleaner through it you'll see something happen just coming back up 
so it, it has nowhere to go basically it's not going down down the holes now getting down to this metal pipe might prove a little bit difficult it's really I can't really see it right, so I've just put my hand down there and pulled that out so you can see this is a rubber hose and just here it goes into a metal pipe that then inserts into the DPF there is the metal tube there I'm talking about just managed to get the camera down here okay so hard to show you would uh, try and use my two hands but I've used this piece of guitar string on a drill and I've put that through the, the metal pipe and just basically <laughs> drilled it until we've broken through the carbon so now that that's been done we can see that the fluid is going through these through the tube now without the tube blowing off in my face or um, the fluid coming back out of the tube see it can flow through the tube now so we've got a nice flow going in and I'm using the launch UK DPF cleaning fluid and you've got a full trigger there pressed we've got the fluid going in nicely now one thing I will mention with these like I said um, there is 92 millibars of pressure 550 at 3000 rpm that is not usually a problem on older DPFs but these new Euro 6 DPFs I'm not sure if this DPF is going to be damaged unfortunately until after we clean it sometimes after you clean the DPF on these you can then reveal that the pressure is now too low and the DPF is damaged and that can happen immediately after you've cleaned it or you don't realize until a few days or a few weeks later you'll probably get a P2002 code come up I've seen it happen a few times on these Ford Transit Connects and the Range Rover Evogue they're the only two cars I know that do it so like I said I've cleaned hundreds of these Connect vans and I do know maybe 20% of them after they've been cleaned will get a fault code come back within within sometimes five minutes or within two weeks that you've now got a P2002 code so that is the um, once you've got rid of all the soot out of the DPF you've then revealed that there is some damage on the DPF. So now I'm just going to run the engine and we'll get the rest of the fluid in with the engine running. One thing I will mention there as well, I get the question a lot via text and email. Launch UK out of stock with the launch fluid. They are back in stock at the minute. But if they are out of stock, what I've, what I've been told is I was looking for some myself at, a, at some point and I spoke with launch. And they've told me that even though the website is out of stock they've got allocated stock to places like euro car parts bennett's and gsf so if it's out of stock online try one of your nearest um motor factors car parts stores and you might find it in stock there now again like i say to everyone i do not work for launch i don't work for launch uk but i get asked the question so i'm just giving you my uh my own tips there on that matter wait until all of this fluid's gone in now we'll remove the gun we'll just let any of the excess fluid there come back out of the tube before we reconnect it back to the sensor okay now we've got the sensor reconnected to the hose now we'll keep a look at the live data so we can see we've already come down now we haven't really cleaned the dpf properly yet so we're not finished so give it a high rev up let it come back down you can see there immediately now the the uh pressure is coming down with the same speed as the engine so now we're just going to hold the revs again up at 3000 rpm already here the engines are a little bit quieter and we should see that come down to around about 50 or 60 millibars they can come down to 40 so we'll see a lot of vapor coming from the exhaust of course that's because it's a hot exhaust with wet fluid in there Now we'll just hold this here for around two or three minutes and we should see these numbers all start to come down. Okay, it is taking a fair while on this one, like I expected, but it's only done 47,000 miles. Um, so what I've done is just clear the codes and we'll take it on a test drive and hopefully the test drive will push out a bit more of the soot because we can put a bit of pressure on the engine. Now with the fault codes reset, we should might be able to get the uh, DPF to do its own region as well while we're on this test drive. Yeah, so we can see now it's at 600 degrees. Um, so yeah, it's a good way to um, actually see if the van's able to do its own region process. 
by taking it on a test drive before the pressure comes down completely. If the pressure is still a little bit high it will activate a regen and then you know the van is capable of doing that on its own. Okay after a test drive we have the DPF pressure down where we'd like it to be. Um, it, it's always erratic on these transit connects but you can see there by the percentages that they've come down so we know that the DPF pressure is no good. Now I can see that pressure looks like it's raised up a little bit. And if we hold it at 3000 RPM, try and get that there. 3000. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it to stay at 3000 RPM. hard to say, yeah, it's 60 to 70. It's a little bit higher, slightly higher than, than you'd expect it to see, 60, 70 millibars. These would usually sit around sort of 40 millibars if the DPF is good. And this would usually hover between sort of 3 to 9, 11 millibars. So I'm seeing that at certain points there go a little bit higher than that. 16, 17 is it? So I think the DPF is getting a bit tired. Now we've got another fault come back, uh, particle filter pressure sensor again. So we might change that over. Okay, I've got the bolt out for the sensor, which is a T25. Now we've just got the sensor out as well, we've just unplugged that. Uh, there's a little electrical connector down here. Let's try and get that so I can show you. Just there. So it's a little, got a little tab on it, you just pull it and release it. So we'll test the pins of the plug here, make sure that we've got continuity on the earth and we've got live at the at the um, at the live and the signal wire. Okay, that's that sensor put put on there. So it also needs an add blue injector down there, so that's gonna have to be done another time. So that's it, see you in the next video.